Welcome to what couldn't possibly be the Whiskey Vault because this is a big brand. What the hell, Daniel? I know, we got a couple of them. This one's from Matthew Pilgrim, a magnificent bastard. Matthew Pilgrim! Oh, wait, 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 not Matthew Pilgrim. <laughs> Retract, retract that. Nathan Pilgrim. Matthew Pilgrim is somebody else that I know. Nathan Pilgrim, you magnificent bastard. Cask? Did I see this right? Yeah. Highland, Highland Park, Park cask strength. strength. Oh no age statement. God, 63.3% ABV. When did we last see a no age statement cask strength? Just earlier. In red breast. In red breast. We did like the 12 better. Yeah. We like the 12 cask better. But there were things to enjoy in the no age statement red breast. This is release number one. The first time they've ever released just, here's Highland Park cast strength. Yeah. Now there's a bunch of barrels in this. This is not a single barrel. And really quick, for context, whenever it comes to no age statement stuff, we don't like it whenever distilleries figure out, oh, there's a lot of momentum with the brand. Let's release something super young and cash in on that momentum. Yeah. That sucks. But what we do enjoy is whenever distiller, they are not so infatuated with putting a number on there for age statements that they use that as an opportunity to get creative and the flexibility of just putting together a bunch of different whiskeys that they have at their disposal to create something hopefully new, interesting, and beautiful. So their guy Gordon Motion went through and hand-selected barrels just for this release. They're going to be repeating it, I guess. Yeah. But this is the first one ever. I don't know what's in it, but 63.3. That's Stag Junior level. I... Love this nose. The nose is uh, peat burnt oranges. You get oranges? Dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, yes. Bitter dark chocolate. Burnt oranges. Slightly charred edges. Almost meaty. Yeah. Sulfur. The burnt ends of a brisket. Yeah, like yeah. that sulfur sherry cask note is in there. That burnt match quality of a yeah. sherry, of sherry cask. Yeah. Oh, it's really, really beautiful nose. You know what? It's not, it's not burning me as much as 63.3% uh, mm -mm. should be punching me in the nose. When you get to the top, it's, it's butterscotch. Wow. What is Highland Park usually proofed at? Is it 43? I think it's 43, 46. 46, somewhere around there. Yeah. That seems, seems about right. Let's take a look. Damn. Damn, though. I'm just living in this nose. It's, if you like Highland Park... Even though there's no H statement on here, this is a really beautiful present. Oh, we got a bunch of them back here. Yeah, they're all in the 46-ish. Nose. So 46-ish. Okay. Which is very common. All right. Is there anything mm. else? Anything else before I go in? Mm -mm. Whoa, that is dense. Holy hell. That is so dense, it's almost like when you eat fudge and it's too intense. Holy hell. And you need to wash it down with something. Holy hell. That's still unraveling. That is... And unfurling and uncoiling. Ah! It, it tastes like this should be about five times darker. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is charred, too. Like, the peat really takes over a little bit. Yeah. Just on the bite. You know what this reminds me of is the really hot... Balconus releases where the oiliness of it starts yeah. to like it make clings. You, wanna, it clings. Yeah, there's a little peppery. So on the taste, the, throat. the proof shows up on the taste, but mm. the thing that's most fun for me about high proof stuff is when the flavors keep up. Mm -hmm. Right? Because whenever you get smacked around a little bit, it's you, not just you, ethanol. You get a little bit of spanking, you get tossed around the room. Whenever you give me a little tasty treat, whilst the spanking occurs. Mm -hmm. That's my love language. I'm gonna add a little water to this one, just to see what happens. I'm gonna let it mix in and instead of just push things to Going the Going back to the nose, I get, uh, again, burnt match. That's taking mm -hmm. the lead, and then that charred end of the brisket oh, behind it. Oh, smell that. Butterscotch just jumped to the top. You did a little water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All those sweet, dark, candied notes. So whenever, like, the rare times that we'll share a glass, Mm -hmm. Do you actively think about how my mustache is pressed up against the lip no, of I, this? No, I intentionally try to partition that out of my mind. So whenever I take just a quick moment to m make sure that you know that my mustache was fully flush against the rim of the, the, rim mm -hmm. of the glass seconds before you went in there mm -hmm. and layered it across mm -hmm. your lippage. You, yeah, I'm still not thinking about it, even while you're talking. You don't appreciate that, yeah. is what I'm saying. Still not thinking about it. W what are you not thinking about? Uh, the whiskey. Why would you that not think? This was cask strength, Highland Park. Yeah. 
that I probably took down to the um, low 50s instead of 60 something. That's what I was thinking about. But Mustang. And butterscotch <laughs> and citrus and chocolate. See if you get a note of stash. I'm just a lot better, although now that you said that. <laughs> wait, wait. What I just smelled when I picked it up with, with, while desperately trying to not think about it was if you accidentally burn your hair. No! <laughs> yeah. Oh. Smell that again and think. Don't tell me. Burnt it's, hair. No, come on. No, I don't get it. Yeah. No, yeah. I did get a little of my Chipotle. The sulfur. No, I'm not getting that. <laughs> no. Uh, so, like, there's a salty quality. There's so many things happening mm. in this whiskey. Yeah. Highland Park is a fun whiskey to go exploring. Oh, yeah. With and, the water. And it's also the, the, how, it, how uh, readily available it is. This is a brand. I don't mm. know about the cash strength, but this is a brand where you can pretty easily find Highland Park in yeah. most places. And damn, if it's not a fun, everything about it, mm -hmm. from the bottle design to the notes that it's given you to, it's not super smoky like Isla's and it's but, not super sweet. It has this own kind of unique place in the world of it's Scotch. It's own thing going on. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, though. Wow, though. But are you thinking about the stash now? I'm trying not to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going back in. I'm going, I think it deserves uh, another pass. Okay. You want some water? Well, just see what's happening. Um, this is what I was doing hey, with your glass. The only way I've been able to function for the last eight years of my life is a really strongly adapted compartmentalization. Yeah. But. And. And I breathe. It's hard to explain right. how highly developed it is now. See, I breathed out a little. So there's like a nose air situation that happened in conjunction. Still not hearing anything. With you're saying. The stash. It's just flowing right by. It's like I'm looking at the, one of those paintings where if you stare at it, you go cross side, you see a ship. Right. But I'm not going cross side. It's do like you, I'm staring at the painting. Yeah. Do you, do you see Are it? you seeing the ship? Just nope. The stash appear. Yeah. The fog. Yeah, no, I'm just seeing the same square, weird block print digital mm. thing, but I'm still not seeing a sailboat. Mm. The fruity sweetness that carries with it the savory, smoky, meaty quality with the salty brininess. Mm. There's so much interest. Yes. Yeah. And with water, even more interesting. Damn, though. Damn! Damn, though. That's good. So, yeah, yours had water? Mm hmm. Okay. It's really good. It adds all these, like, uh, it doubles down on what I thought was the citrus thing. Yeah. Now you're exhaling into the glass. You really went for that one. Just fogged that one up. Just that's how I knows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how I knows. Yeah. Roll tape. Let's see how he intentionally. It's personal preference. <laughs> personal preference. Into the glass. The best yeah. whiskey is whiskey you like to drink the way you like to drink it. That's, yeah. That's, that's how I drink it, Daniel. Sure. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Remove limit break. You know, for being in the Wizard Academy, you'd think these guys would know some magic by now. Yeah. <laughs> I I I learned some shit from br watching Brushwood's yeah, episodes. Yeah. 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 And, I, and I did that with my kid. My kid's getting super into my middle child. Mm. Super into magic now. Oh, yeah. And he was bugging me all week. He's like, whenever Brian comes over to the distillery next time, can I show him some card tricks? Oh, yeah. And he did. And Brian put on a little show for him. It was great. That's cool. Yeah, we got Cash this. did that one card trick that Brunchwood taught you. Yeah. We, we had already learned that because he did it with his daughter. Yeah, yeah. And Cash learned it. Yeah. Cash has been doing on it. Anyone within 10 feet, if he can find a card deck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's got all the pattern down and everything. Yeah. He's like, so I'm going to look at your eyes, but you look at the cards. And watch people's dive. Yeah, he's doing the whole thing. Uh, for those who don't know, we're talking about Brian Brushwood, a co host on The Modern Rogue. It's another really great YouTube channel to mm -hmm. talk about things, not whiskey. Snipes 200 IQ. Guys, I love your videos, but you should give the whiskeys an actual rating out of 100 mm. at the end of the videos. So we talk about this, but we don't believe in ratings because they're so arbitrary. Yeah. Well, so arbitrary <laughs> and it's like we're and so there's two problems one right. ratings are bullshit and arbitrary two we're never gonna remember what we rated things right <laughs> so do you know you know where i think ratings are not arbitrary hmm. because so much of this comes down to personal preference yeah and it doesn't matter how experienced you are you'll you're gonna bring with you the things that you like and prefer and dislike and you can recognize it as good quality but it's not really my preferred category Whenever you are looking something, looking for something that you are likely to enjoy, mm -hmm. and you can see a large group of other people's ratings, mm -hmm. like uh, a, 
um, an like aggr Yelp aggregated or, re yeah. review score and stuff like that. So well, right. a lot of people really enjoy this. It gets highly rated by 1,200 people. There's value in that. Well, you go in the app store. If I see like four out of five stars with no, with three reviews, yeah. I'm like, eh. But if I see three out of four, three out of five, yeah. but a thousand yeah. reviews, yeah, yeah. I'll be like, oh, that's a pretty solid middle of the road. Yeah. Right. Now, here's where it can be helpful whenever it's just a single person giving a review. Whenever you find a reviewer mm -hmm. whose preferences are very much in line with your own, which yep. is really hard to do. Well, that's why on this show we do that because people have watched us long enough. They yep. know if Rex likes something and they know, oh, I probably tend to like that. And there's mm. been people like, I know if Daniel likes it, I won't like it. Mm. Uh, we've had both. But I've decided I'm going to institute new ratings from now on. I'm going to do them. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to make it up each time. Sure. But like I give this Thir seven out of nine cats. Well, I mean, that's a lot of cats. Yeah. That's, I mean, I'd, I'd say eight. On out. a scale of nine cats. That's an eight out of nine. I would give this a 7.47. I give them out of nine. I cats. give this seventy-two percent of all the babingos. Mm. Which, whenever you convert babingos into actual ratings, it means it's pretty good. That's pretty good. And here's to fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. If you steal, may you steal your lover's heart. And if you drink, may you drink with us. <laughs>